Welcome to Sound of the Yellow Horn, where faith, tradition, and philosophy meet the modern world. Here is your host, Mark Greer. Welcome to the show, everyone, and hail the gods and goddesses. I'm your host, Mark Pereer, and here we are on another episode of Sound of the Gjallarhorn. Now, today we're going to talk about something that I feel is um, really gets at the core of a lot of the issues that we see in the world today. And it's going to be something that, that I, I personally feel is a, is a valuable lesson to teach people because it allows us to recognize why things are and what has happened and why they happen and how they're continuing to happen until we can break the cycle, right? And it's a cycle that's been, that we've been going through for a long time. And it's because people haven't been able to recognize what the cycle is and, and why it is doing what it does and how it works. And, and I'll get to what I'm saying. Um, so what we're talking about really is, is a differentiation between the two core principles on planet Earth. And it's really like you can literally divide the planet in half um, of people who believe either one way or another. Um, I really can't think of a third way or another way. Um, no, there's, there's pretty much just the two. I mean, maybe somebody could tell me another way. But it's really these two principles are unification versus diversification. Now, unification is the principle that all things on the planet should should be united. They should all exist under one banner under one culture, that they're all one race, they're all one belief system, one ideal, that it's all united, everything's the same, it's all united. And that's not really the heathen way, that's not any heathen culture has ever recognized that ever. And then there's diversification. Now diversification is is basically diversity, it's the celebration that all things are different. All things are different, that they are, and that we want to you know, celebrate those differences and respect them and and teach other people to respect them and we also want to celebrate our own identities and our own um you know ethnic qualities and our own ideas that come with that with our culture and our people and so we believe in the celebration of diversity now it's interesting that unifiers and that's what we'll call them in this show that unifiers say that they believe in diversity but generally they believe in homogenization which is exactly the synonymous with unification that we're all going to be united. We'll all be one. It's all going to be one. Everything's going to be under one banner, and one government, one ideal, one thing. And it's going to be great. We'll all live under that and it's going to be a utopia and we're all going to be happy. All right? The problem with this is that once you start to see this, once you start to recognize this, you can see that unification has existed in a different form, under a different guise, a different mask, for thousands of years. That it, 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 it has existed since the earliest histories that we've known and probably into prehistory and it really represents like the death of civilization it is the death of culture is the death of societies and races and peoples it is it is a horrible evil terrible concept that literally has the lives of billions in its wake just the bloodshed is just you could lift literally fill the ocean with it and so when we see people arguing about who killed the most in this belief system or who killed the most in that belief system or who's more evil here or who did what, blah, 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 blah. The thing is, is that I always ask people, you know, why do we not like a certain idea, a certain belief? You know, like, why don't people like communism? Why don't people like Nazism? Why don't people like this and that? And, and a lot of people, a lot of times you're being lied to or told that it was because of this or that or the other when you see history and it's it's not really what they say it is but the thing is is that w when i look at things I, I don't look at banners i don't look at party platforms i don't look at this stuff i look at like what don't i like like what are you going to do that i don't like i don't like tyrants being in control of my life i don't like people being slaughtered for no reason i don't like you know uh, bloodshed in the streets i don't want an army come knocking on my door and put me in jail for criticizing my government I don't like those things and I don't care what platform it's under. I don't care what you believe in, what you think in. I don't care about all that. What I care about is is evil and bad stuff happening and people who believe in evil things. And I truly in my heart believe that if you are a unifier, that you really need to reconsider your worldview because I I think that the people on the ground level, just the common folk who um, believe in unification are simply being manipulated. And they've always been manipulated because unification is the ultimate game of manipulation. And when you see it in history, I mean, these, these aren't conspiracy theories. These aren't 
you know, kind of stretches of the imagination or whatever. These are things that were blatantly said. Like when you look in the history books, people can be more honest when they're not actually doing at that time, when they're not actually trying to, you know, manipulate people. They can say, oh, yeah, that we did that. We did this. And that's what we did and all that stuff. So you look back at history, you can start to see the principles and values behind this idea and why it's been so destructive to humanity. Now, what we'll do is we're going to start, um, we'll start looking back in the history. We'll start in the very first case of unification that we know of. And the, um, you know, I'm sure it goes back further than that, but I think, you know, we'd be delving into prehistory and all that. We're going to go to ancient Egypt. Now, ancient Egypt, the first unifier that we know of, he's also called the first monotheist, but that's contested. There are people who disagree with that, but we'll say that that's the case. And we're going to call him our first unifier was Amenhotep the fourth. Now, Amenhotep IV was an Egyptian pharaoh, the son of Amenhotep III, and he, um, he, you know, was the high pharaoh of the land and all that. And at the time, you had the pantheon of Ra and Isis and Osiris and all these different deities. And with the, you know, many deities comes many pharaohs, many priests, many temples, and that power gets sort of stretched out across the land because each god has a say-so in the pantheon. Each god has a way as a representative through a pharaoh. And so what this uh, Akhenaten, that's what he changed his name to, his name was Amenhotep IV, um, Amenhotep IV, he decided that he was going to eliminate that pantheon, declare all the gods to be false, raise his god, Aten, to, uh, to the only god, the single god, and then change his name to Akhenaten, which means the son of God. So he becomes the only deity in there. He becomes the only, Amenhotep becomes the only pharaoh of the land. All the power gets consolidated, all the wealth, all the money starts immediately destroying temples, killing non-believers, attacking people and all that stuff. Now, interestingly enough, his son, King Tut, um, ended this. Now, the, 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 this change, this rabbit, you know, um, sort of revolutionary change is what they called it. The Arma, Amarna Revolution um, really changed the whole face of Egypt and probably led to its downfall. It pretty much crumbled after that, even though King Tut... King Tut was famous because he was uh, Akhenaten's son. He was famous because he uh, he brought back the old ways, and that's why he was given such lavish burials. And he's so, you know, you see so many so much praises to him because, you know, it was a scary time for the Egyptians. And then when King Tut brought the old ways back, it was like a, a time to you know really reflect back on the ancestors and the old ways and all that stuff. And they really praised King Tut for that. But it was too late. The seeds had been sown. You know, Egypt fell. Uh, there were other factors, obviously, but then this idea spread into the Middle East and it started to, to sprout uh, as Judaism and the Judaic tribes started to conquer one another with it because they realize, you know, you realize you can consolidate power with this stuff. So one tribe can dom dominate another and the, you know, their god of war was Yahweh and they basically, the cult of Yahweh took over and started destroying everybody and, and he took over and became the primary god and the sole god and the god that we that they know today as their singular God. Now, this idea really started to take root as it spread into Europe because it came under the Roman Empire. Now, the Romans really, the Romans were master propagandists. They, they, the, everything they did was built upon conquering with force and conquering with propaganda. Everything they did, you can read the, um, the Agricola by Tacitus. You can read some of Caesar's works. You can, you can read a lot of the books. They were, I mean, the, the Romans were one of the the best recorded ancient empires in the world ever known, you know. And so they, they used a lot of propaganda to try to subjugate people, and that was a big deal to them. So the, um, the, once they adopted Christianity, you know, that unification principle became a part of their, their identity because they, wanted, they already wanted to conquer the world, and they, they felt that they could do it, but they had a problem subjugating the people because their traditions were so strong. And we've talked a lot on this show about how tradition is stronger than religion, stronger than politics, stronger than anything. It's, it's, it's what binds people, and it's really hard to break that boundary. And so that's why that's like the first thing. You know, you have to break down the boundary. You have to break down the traditions. Everything that's sacred to you, everything that's holy to you, everything that's mattered to, you, to your family and to your ancestors, all that has to be destroyed first. And that's what happened. Because it, once they destroy the people, then they can subjugate them. You destroy them from the inside, from their soul, from their spirit. And so that's what happens. And so, you know, we see empire after empire go through this. You know, the Byzantiums, the, the Mesopotamians later, I mean, the, the, then the rise of Islam. 
and all these different uh, cultures and empires start developing this idea of unification that they're going to bring about this great world and all this stuff. And then later on, when religion starts to kind of wane and science starts to take place, we see the same idea raise its head as a scientific platform in the name of communism or national socialism or socialism or the many creeds that it has fallen under. And it's, a, and it's all based on the idea of unification. That we're all going to bring everybody together, whether they like it or not. Now see, when you have that idea, when you have that idea that you're going to bring people together, that you're going to have love and peace and everyone's going to be great and it's going to be wonderful and, and all this stuff, you know, you start to see that the uh, that these these people they're they're lying they're always lying and they and they purposefully lie I mean this isn't like they like a lot of people are useful idiots and a lot of people have um you know just follow along whatever is being told to them and whatever and you know that the people who are pushing these lies and these manipulations are the people who want all the power and they want all the power and they want all the control and it's the way it's always been it's what they've always wanted they want more power and more control it's much more difficult to have a lot of power and control, especially in today's world, because we have, there's been so much unification that's happened to, to tell people that you can no longer, that you have to basically limit yourself within a certain tribe or a certain nation or a certain, you know, continent or a certain culture of people. It becomes more difficult because you want to conquer the world, right? You want all the resources, every bit of it. You want every culture, every planet, you want everybody serving you. So you want that power and you want that structure and you want that money in order to do that. It's the same thing within the ancient tribes, you know, the ancient peoples. I mean, it's, it was much harder. Like you're talking a tribe could have been like the size of a neighborhood. And so when you have that and it's like the neighborhood controls itself and it controls the people within it and it has its own tribal leaders and it has its own people that control that. And you don't really mess with that. And you don't go in there and do that. Well, that's, it's really hard to get power out of that, isn't it? When you have a people that are kind of reclusive and they're not, they don't want to mess with you and they don't want you, you know, controlling them or dominating them. So what do you got to do? You got to, you got to first, you got to either go in there and kill them all, or you go in there and just beat them to death and then subjugate them and make them all your slaves. Or you can go in there and you can start to, to fool them, to manipulate them, to make them believe in this idea of unification that you want to be unified with the world. You want to be connected to all this because it's going to bring you so many great things in your life. It's going to bring you peace and love and we're going to build a utopia and then like you look into the future and it's going to be so wonderful and they want you to look in the future because if you look in the past and you see how many times they have failed doing this you're going to run for the hills you're not going to want to be a part of this because this is this is the the great philosophy that has led to all the world's death all the great times that we have seen all the death and decay and violence and hate it, it can all be linked back to this idea of unification, just about all of it. I mean, yeah, in ancient times, we had tribal wars and stuff like that, and there were territorial disputes and, and battles, and they had human sacrifices, and there were things. I mean, I'm not going to overly romanticize our ancestors and, and say that they, they didn't have things that I wouldn't do today, you know. But the idea of unification is like what, a, what is brought about, you know, the, the pogroms and the, uh, the killing fields and the inquisitions and the crusades and the slaughters and it's just you just go back and it can be mind-boggling once you see you know what's behind the mask and you look at this idea of unification and this is really the core of all of this right then it's like well these this is like a lot of death that this has been applied to and really it shows that the world's never going to be unified like that it's never going to be spiritually unified and that sounds horrible to some people. Oh my God, it'll never be unified. Why? Why can't it be unified? Because people who are obsessed with unification think that it's, it must happen. Like we must make this happen. And that's when they get obsessed and that's when they get mad when it doesn't happen and they just want to go start killing people. But the thing is, is when you look at diversification, true diversification, and it should be our word. It should be the word of all traditionalists because traditionalists believe in diversity. They always have. There's never been a time when traditionalists did not believe in diversity because we believe in the pre preservation of our folk and our culture, and we believe in the preservation of all folks and all cultures, all indigenous peoples, all of them. That's, that's what we support. That's what we believe in. That's our cause. We are diversifiers, and we should, we should help other diversifiers. I'm not saying unite with them because we're not unifiers, obviously, but we help them. We should, you know, stick out an olive branch and say, hey, you know, we're, we're here to help because... 
we want this too. We want diversity. We want diversification. We want all of our peoples to be respected and honored and paid tribute to and not fall into the slaughter of homogenization that the unifiers want so badly. The world is never going to be unified. It's never going to happen. Some people have pretend have pretended to play this game for centuries and and all they do is kill. That's all they do. It's it's the end result of it every single time. But you look at and and the reason why is because like I said in its very core from the very beginning of it, the very first time we see it, it has to be intrusive. That's the nature of it. It's almost like saying unification and intrusion are synonymous as well. Because it has to be intrusive. Because it's saying we we must take all of these people on this planet and you're going to be all one whether you like it or not. Oh well, too bad. Right? Whereas diversifiers are like, hey, we just want to be left alone. We just want to live in our tribes, live in our countries. We want to do our thing. We want to be successful. We want to be happy. We want to have, you know be with our families and, and connect and grow our folk and, and celebrate our ideas and be free and do all of these things. You know, uh, I, I think of like Titus, um, one of my favorite accounts because it really shows, I mean, I know it's a, it's kind of a brutal account, but it really shows like the whole idea of give me liberty or give me death because it's, it was, um, you know, the, the Romans had conquered one of the Germanic tribes and they went into the tribal area and they were going to, you know, parlay with them and talk to them about, um, you know, how they had beat them in, on the field of battle and subjugated them. So the Germans came in to talk to them and, and told them, yeah, you beat us square and fair or fair and square. Sorry. And, um, and we want to talk terms. And so they did. And the Germans said, well, we want to retain our freedom, retain our Liberty, which is important to our people. And we want to learn from your priesthood. And the Romans said, no, they, they negated all of that. We're not doing that. You, you are subjugated. You're going to be our slaves and you're, you're going to do what we say because we conquered you fair and square. Right. So Germans said, okay, they went back into their village and they killed all their children and they hanged themselves with ropes made out of their own hair. Now that's a people who won't be subjugated. That's true diversity. That's true diversification. We're going to, we're going to preserve our people. And we are so devoted to that idea of being free and being us and not being under you that we will go to that, that extreme, to that length. That's pretty hardcore. And that's what we have to celebrate. That's what we have to be a part of as heathens. Diversification to say, hey, we are us and you are you. We don't hate you. We don't want to hurt you. We don't want to harm you. Unifiers want to do that. Because unifiers are the ones who believe in the idea that you you are in the way. You're a problem. You're a problem because you don't fit in with the program. And you can see now in these days, in today's times, you know, with the riots and the the, the killings and the you know all the hate and the division and, and the anger and all that stuff you know you can see the people who claim that they they stand for minorities they do that until the minorities speak out against them and then they don't stand for them anymore why because the minorities stood up for themselves they stood up for their diversification they stood up for them as a people and as a group and said we are not going to we are not going to play this game and so as soon as that happens, they immediately get demonized. They immediately get get attacked. They get told that they're not this or that. And they get hated because it's not about that. None of it's about that. None of it has ever been about, you know, the things that are being said. It's not about unity. I mean, it's not about love and it's not about peace and it's not about helping minorities and it's not about helping anybody. It's about unification. It's about homogenization. It's about bringing you under this banner and you're going to believe like us and you better believe like us or we're going to destroy you because you are you were subjugated a long time ago and you just need to accept that, that you better toe the line and give us our votes and give us our power and do what we say or we're going to throw you to the wayside and we're going to run all over you with, with every bus that we've got. And so that's really what it is because that's the way it's always been. These people, the people who do this, the people that you see are no different than the Christian mobs who were slaughtering people and, and burning people at the stake in, you know, in the 10th century, 11th century, 17th century, all the way through most of a lot of Europe's uh, history. And so when you see this violence and all this stuff, I mean, this, this is what it is. It's a cult. It's a mentality of, of hate. It's a mentality of destruction. And so like the people who... And so because they have a lot of media behind them and they have a lot of power behind them in, in influencing people, the people out there who 
who look at us and they see us as hateful people and they see us as violent people or bad people and they try to equate us with this ideology or that ideology and stuff like that. I mean, anybody, I would ask you to just play them this video because this is really the core of it, right? If I want to be diversified, if I want the world to be diversified, then by the very core of that, I can't hurt you. I can't bother you. It's not, it's not up to me to bother you because it's my business and that's all I want. That's all our people want is our business. This is our business. This is our land. These are our people. This is our culture. This is the way we are. It's our business. It's not your business. We don't want to hurt you. We don't want to mess with you. We are diversifiers, which means we want the world to be diverse. If we wanted to go around and kill everybody and make the world all like our big, bad white homeland or something like that, then we wouldn't be diversifiers. We'd be unifiers. And I think that that's why so many of them are so afraid because they think of that. They think that we're unifiers. They think that that's what we want. We want global domination. We want to run the rule of the world and take over the planet like a mad scientist. Oh, look at me. I want to rule the world. That's not what we want. We want to end unification. We want to destroy it because we know that it is the creed of Ragnarok. It is the creed of Jotuns. It is the creed of desert cults. It is the creed of destruction, death, mayhem, and chaos. Which is funny because it claims to be about order and and trying to bring things together and trying to make an order of things, but it just it can't. And the reason why it can't is because unification opposes nature. And see, this is where we start breaking into the philosophy, right? Because uh, even like some of the Greek philosophers believed in some unification principles in as far as uh, the universe went. Uh, Plato talked a lot about it. And, you know, there were other philosophers who followed along with him. Uh, Aristotle was one. I mean, you know, there were others who believed in uh, the separation, diversification of the universe. But I, I believe in the diversification of the universe. And it's mainly because you cannot identify one single force in the in the universe that exist as a singularity it doesn't it, it's not how it works you know it, there is nothing that's a singularity everything is many everything is multiples everything exists as multiples and i've said this before i I've, I've said this you know this is part of the nine points of odinic philosophy that i that i promote um even us as human beings i think of myself as a singularity when i look at myself in the mirror but the fact is that's not the truth i'm made up of billions and billions of little cells and molecules and all the things that make me up so I myself am not a singularity. So how could people who see themselves as singularities who are not? And that's like, the, I guess, the ultimate red pill moment, isn't it? Because you, you, um, you yourself are not a singularity. You are not unified. You're just a bunch of rambling molecules in, in a form that you believe is unified, but it's not. It's, it's as diversified as the rest of the universe. So this, so once you start to see that and recognize that, it's like, how could you possibly imagine that you're ever going to achieve this goal of unifying everything when that's not how the universe works? You look at the animal kingdom and all the animals are diversified and we want them to be diversified because that's a healthy ecosystem. Plants and trees and, and flowers and, and, you know, sea creatures and, and birds and all these different things, they're all diversified. They all have their special little compartments. They're things that, that makes them who they are and defines them and gives them an identity. And we're the same way. We're just more complex. We are animals and we are more com we're more complex animals and we have higher ideas and we believe in spirituality and 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 we have science and we have things that explain the universe and we have different parts of ourselves that we identify with that makes us what we believe to be a higher life form, but we are still a life form. We're still animals. Right? We're still connected to the primal nature of the universe. And as much as we think that we're going to overcome that, that is never going to happen. And the people who believe that they can are fooling themselves. They are the ultimate fools. Because what they are doing, and what they have always done, is just lead people to the slaughter. And that's, that's the primary purpose of their existence, is to lead people to the slaughter. And they've done it over and over and over again. I'm sure, I, I, I would challenge anyone right now to go and find a person who committed murder on a mass scale, who wasn't doing it in the name of unification. Look it up. Look in the history books. Find somebody. I'm sure you might can find somebody. But most of the time when you're seeing it, 99.9% .9 of the time when you're seeing these horrible atrocities throughout history, 
You're seeing it done in the name of unification. And so that's what we have to recognize. That's what we have to see. That's what we have to fight against. That's what we have to step up for. That's what heathenry is about. That's the nature of it. That's always been the nature of it. When the first Romans stepped in foot into German soil, we knew what our battle was. Our battle was for our freedom. It was for our culture. It was for our people. And it was for the diversification of this planet and not the unification of it, not the subjugation in front of an empire. Think of Boudicca who committed suicide before she would be a slave to a unifying empire. She wanted to be tribal. She wanted to be cultural. She wanted to stand up for her folk and her people, not some other folk, some other people, but hers and hers alone. And so the idea that the Romans were going to come in and unify her with the entire planet was something that revolted her and disgusted her. And she saw that as, as antithetical to freedom and liberty and all the great things that her people had loved and appreciated and cherished from time immemorial. And so this is something that we have to recognize. We have to look at the mask. We have to look at the faces behind it, the ideas behind it, and see what is it that makes this happen. So that if it ever comes down where we can, you know, create our own civilization again, where we can, where all this stuff tears down and we start to rebuild or, or we create our own little enclave or whatever it is that we can do in the future. I hope people will take this recording or take my writings or take the writings of other people who believe in this and understand that this is the battle. This has always been the battle and always will be the battle because the unifiers are never going to stop. They believe that they're going to create a perfect world and they're never going to. So they'll just keep killing and keep killing and keep killing and it will never stop unless we can figure out a way to break the cycle as diversifiers. So that's it. That's all I got tonight. Uh, I appreciate everybody listening. I know that got a little intense, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. I want everybody to um, to hit us up, you know, look at my website or the Norna Society website, www.nornaorg. Or you can email us nornsociety at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and, you know, send us a letter we, or send us an email, send us a message. You can hit us up on Facebook. Um, we're always we're out there doing all kinds of stuff. We've actually got a really cool project coming up where we're about to put another book out. But this book is going to be special. This is going to be a museum quality grade text of our heathen Eddas. It's going to be the Odinist Edda or Asatru Edda, whichever one. It's the same text, and we're going to basically put it all in runes. It's going to have artwork. It's going to have parchment paper. It's going to have leather binding. It's going to be beautiful. I mean, I'm really working really hard with printers and book binders and, and seller. I mean, um, and uh, the people making the cover and all this stuff to make this just the best that I possibly can. I'm working really hard on it, so we're hoping to be taking pre-order soon. Um, so yeah, just message us and I want everybody to have a good night and hail the gods and goddesses. With brick and stone, with in